Hey everybody, Halloween is right around the corner and you don't want to meterle miel al susto with your scary bush, right? <laughs> know who can help? That's right, our friends at Manscaped. Mira, just because the monsters are out doesn't mean your down there parts need to look like the Wolfman during a full moon. From the perfect package with the waterproof lawnmower 3.0 trimmer that reduces nicks on your pumpkins to the crop care kit that includes the crop preserver ball deodorant because let's face it the sting from down there is the spookiest thing year round and as always use promo code betel20 p-e-r-o 2-o at manscaped.com and get 20 percent off your order and free shipping 20 percent off to keep your balls trimmed and fresh Hell yes. So visit manscaped.com today and use promo code BITTLE20 for 20% off any purchase. Hi, people. This is DJ. This is Ish. And this is Season season 3 of of BITTLE Let Let Me Tell You. You. Like, it's true. And I won't expect you to put out at the end of it either. If you want to, it's totally fine. But I'm not going to expect anything from you. Okay. And that, listeners, is how we're starting episode 132. (laughs) For people that don't understand the dynamics of our friendship, (laughs) they're going to think that's really weird. (laughs) But people who've listened to the show at all will think that's perfectly fine. No. If you're a first time listener, I yeah, exactly. well, yeah. If you're a first time listener, so we gotta set it up a little bit here. So, welcome everybody to Pero Let Me Tell You, episode 132. Um, as you know from the intro, I'm Ish, but that is definitely not DJ. Absolutely, uh, not. absolutely not. So, as you may remember, you know DJ's working on some election related stuff, so it's getting a little hectic and. You know, our commitment is always to get you guys an episode per week, and we have had such great fun. And, you know, the best part about this whole podcast is we've gotten to meet so many wonderful people that we're now going to start seeing if we can pull from that wonderful list of people that we've met and bring in some co-hosts to to help us, you know, keep that flow going. So we've got Stephanie from Mamas and Merlot, who I think this is like your fourth time on the show. Something like that. Something like that. It would have been your fifth if we had figured out how the hell to make the Christmas uh, episode work. Oh my God. Can I get like a five timers club like on SNL? Okay. Am I the first one? I think you're the only one. Yes. That's fine. (laughs) Yes. It's a lonely club, but it's yours. I'd rather be alone. So it's fine. (laughs) I don't want anybody else if I can hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we're saying actually because Steph, you know, she, she again, she's a great guest host. Like legit. She brought from Mitabla. She brought like, it's just this meats and cheeses and fruits and crackers. I brought adult and Lunchables because she, it's, 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 um, it's a charcuterie board. Yes. But which is, again, given the shout out to Mitabla because yes. we've, we've bought them like, this is many, not a paid sponsorship times. or anything. She's like my they're, new favorite person. They're just legit. Yeah, I pay for all of this, by the way. Like, yeah. this is not free shit. Yeah, I never got anything for free either. I pay for it, and it's totally worth every penny. So check yeah, them out. Yeah, um, she's my new favorite person. Uh, she did a grazing table for me for an event uh, two weeks ago, and I watched her put it together, and it's literally art. Like, I don't know how she does it, how she has patience for it. I love the I, idea of a grazing table. I know. Like, uh, no, just like goats, it's... just like like human goats. So do you want to know that? I know that you don't, like, care for this kind of stuff, so whatever. We can move on from it quickly. <laughs> But we'll uh, the first time I saw a grazing table <laughs> was on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, of course, those sows would have a grazing listen, table. Listen, you know <laughs> that it's not anything involved with me if I don't bring up the Housewives. I know I, it's I, not your thing. It's the, it's so not my thing. But you can humor me for two But seconds. you know what? You're a guest, so I'll be respectful of that. <laughs> but anyway, the, my point is is that like on Kyle Richards' like, giant like dining, dining table, <laughs> she had like a giant charcuterie board. And I was like, what is this? I'd never seen that before. Oh, wow. I was like, what is this? So it, that was like probably like a year or two ago that mm-hmm. I saw that. Um, and I'm like, this is great. And she had it at a party and that's what I do. So I'm like, this is a great idea. And like, I've been trying to get like somebody on board with it. And I finally got a client that wanted it. And I was like, yes. And you had just the person to go to. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, thanks, Lily. It's really yummy. Really, really freaking yummy. I'm telling you, I've ordered from them like twice already. And just this year. I believe you. Because <laughs> I'm a fat bitch. I ordered, so I had the crazy table two weeks ago. I ordered this today. I ordered another one to give to my bride on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of grazing in Miami is in, what I'm hearing. I put in another order today. I've sent her today alone like $300. Because <laughs> I put in another order for 
for a bride that wants this as like her like getting ready lunch. In, oh, no, in, that's a very smart idea. Well, I, I was telling her I have the idea now. It's like I think I'm going to start sending these to my brides like as a thank you smart. on their wedding days because like you don't want to eat a lot. Right, but but you need to eat something. Right. Crunch into the mic. Um, <laughs> Sorry, listeners. <laughs> Sorry, it's my fault. Um, so I was like, this would be, and like, it's it, it's affordable. It's not like it costs an arm and a leg. So I'm like, right. I should, I could start sending this to my brides. It's like a thank you with like my little, I ordered today like little personalized thank you cards. Oh my God, wow. Yeah, I ordered a lot of merch today for you. <laughs> you were very busy today. I was. Um, so <laughs> and I'm going to start like putting that all together and like gifting it to my brides. It's like my thank you. I mean, I, look at that. Hire guest, me. Guest host, she comes with ideas. She comes with a, with a vision. I mean, I freaking love know, it. I'm good at my job. So. I freaking love it. <laughs> okay, hablando de elections and all that. I mean, not too much because God knows everybody else is talking enough about it. But yes, but that's um, fine. So I did that's my early too. my early voting. I did it this I week. I have had my absentee ballot sitting on my kitchen counter. Woman, I have it filled out. I just want to take it to oh, a okay. Dropbox on the day of. Not on the day of necessarily. I don't mind doing it early, but it's like there's only. I don't want to get into a whole thing about voter suppression, but <laughs> there's only four drop-off ballots in Miami-Dade County. And I'm like, what the fuck? Are we Texas? Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's they, and they did this during the August primaries also. Mm-hmm. And how... There was one here in the Gables. Yeah, Coral, mm-hmm. Gables, Coral Gables is one of them. Uh, South Dade, the Elections Department, and like one in like North Dade. Oh, okay. But I'm like, that's it for the whole county. Right, right. Four. Wow. One, two, three, four. It's not a lot. Which is bonkers to me and like tell me i don't i like sit here and convince me that that's not voter suppression because there's a, a ton of people i was having this argument the other day and there are a ton of people that for whatever the fuck reason can't stand in line even if that reason is that they don't just fucking want to <laughs> well but you can always mail it in listen if you don't want to wear a mask i don't want to stand in line come at me bitch <laughs> so many things she doesn't want to do ladies <laughs> and gentlemen Gosh, you but- can mail it in but if you're my, my whole point with that is is if you're like elderly or homebound and mm-hmm. like are a vulnerable person like we're right. still in the middle of a pandemic where people think we are or not we are right so the if you're an elderly homebound person mm-hmm. or you're sick or you have or you're a cancer patient or whatever you're restricted in some you're way you're restricted in some mm-hmm. way you're immunocompromised in some way the last thing that you should be doing is standing in an hours long line. True. So True. if you, and to drop it off, like my mom went to drop her absentee ballot mm-hmm. off the other day and my grandmother mailed hers in. Like they but if you're scared but if you're if you're scared of the whole like election fraud narrative or right, the mail right. fraud narrative, like what are your options? This is true. So it's it all of these like little things add up and this is it's literally voter suppression. I don't know. I mean, Sorry, I, I, I don't want to like bring the room down. No, no, no. Not, no, time. you're not bringing the room down. It's just, I mean, I get what you're saying, but on, on another level, I also look at it from the perspective of like trying to just control, you know, like the the flow of it. Because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, if you have like 800 of these, I'm making up a number, but if you have like so many of them that you can't really like supervise it, yeah. then you're opening yourself well, they, up for... They used to be one at every poll, like not at every polling place, but like all the early voting locations, mm-hmm. it's like 20 something of them, yeah, had, had one. one. Right. And all of a sudden in August... There's only four. Mm, okay, I didn't know there was that many yeah. before. Yeah. So, um, so you, you and 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 any early voting place, as long as you're a registered voter, you can vote anywhere. So, like, right. you know, you can vote at the one really close to your job, whatever. So, if you're on the way to work and you have your ballot, and you know, you kind of are sketchy about the whole mail-in thing, but you have a ballot, you mm-hmm. don't want to stand in lines. We're in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Like, you, in theory, should be able to just like drop it drop off it on off. your way to like pick up the kids or whatever. Right. May ha- whatever. Sanos, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. You know, but there's 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 circ- not everybody has the same circumstances. This is my point. And not everybody right. has the ability or willingness at this current juncture to stand in the line. It no, is what it is. You're absolutely right. Also, I love the fact that you use word juncture. I mean, I'm trying to be. I, I'm I'm replacing dairy, and I have to like be. <laughs> Hey, I have to be S- on my S- game. SAT words is my department. All right, <laughs> all right. Let's get one thing straight here, sister. <laughs> but no, the one thing I what I love though when I was looking at the ballot, I didn't realize how many. I'm calling them third party presidential nominees, mm-hmm. but they're it's more than third party. There's like a couple of them. Whatever. My favorite though, I don't know who they are. I don't know what it is, but the abbreviation was PSL, and I immediately thought, I'm like, oh, basic bitches have a party. Oh my god, can I run under the like, PSL? Like, go for line? them. <laughs> You're many. I am things. the queen of the basic bitches. You're I many mean, things. Basic is not one of them. I am pretty fucking basic. I Do you know what I'm doing on Sunday? What? 
<laughs> what are you doing on Sunday? My lovely girlfriends and I, uh-huh. and my son, I'm dragging him to this. Um, we're going to go to the berry farm. And we're going to the, take... The Nosberry Farm? Or no, no, no. Uh, the Berry Farm. Uh, it's the, like a new place. Okay. It's basically kind of like... The only way that I can describe it, and I don't mean this in like a negative way, in any way whatsoever, but you know, like the silos at um, in Waco, te- Texas, like the whole like Chip and Joanna Gaines place mm, that they mm-hmm, own? Mm-hmm. It's very much like that. Okay, got it. So it's like a it's like a, a farm, and they have like the shakes and all that stuff, and they have okay. like huge um, sunflower fields, and they have corn mazes, oh, pretty- and so. But it it is like a basic bitch mecca. So on Sunday, we're going. Do you pray in that direction twice a day? A hundred percent. It's five times a day. <laughs> it's um. <laughs> But anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, we're going and we're getting dressed up in like our fall clothes, even though it's hot as fuck outside. Okay, it's hot as hell, but I will say it feels autumnal. It does. It it's does a weird little bit because, because it, it's, it's, it's not. not so, it's not so much the weather, but there's just like something. It no, feels it is. fall like. It, it does. It does because the weather. It's hot, but it's not as hot. I feel like as it's been in previous falls. Right. If that makes right. Sense. Yeah. 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 Um. So you're right. And I was in Orlando this past weekend and it wasn't like we were like a little chilly on Saturday night. I think it was. Well, you guys, yeah, you had, I saw the pictures. You had like sweaters and mm-hmm. like, I mean, light sweaters, but all. Yeah. Like hoodies. But, but yeah, we, so, so it's, it's definitely not what I was expecting considering, you know, like the world is on fire and like the ice caps are melting. Um, but. <laughs> Whatever with the ice caps. <laughs> Whatever. I know how to swim. Um, <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> it's gonna be water world. Who cares? Um, <laughs> we'll adapt. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, it was just not what I was expecting. So I was like pleasantly surprised because I, I we were having this conversation before it started. Like I run very hot. Yes. So yes. <laughs> so uh, listeners, you should know that if you invite Stephanie over, you're gonna have to like cool the house down. Yeah. It's it's a thing. Yeah. So I'm always I don't I'm not a sweaty person, but I always <laughs> feel hot. So I love how you made that distinction. Because I'm not a sweaty You're like, person. I'm not a sweaty person. I'm not like, a sweaty person. I'm like, not a smelly person. Right. Because normally when you think hot. of people that run hot, like that's, that's where you're brain... yeah. And like... I'm not sulao, but I'm just I, I You just run hot. I just run hot. You run hot. That's okay. So or maybe it's just like <laughs> the icy veins like need to be in their own like natural habitat. We have had this conversation. You are not as dead inside as you want everybody to think you are. Listen. But you know what? We're gonna move on because that's okay. that's a topic for that's a topic I'm for not another cheese board. Talk about that yet. That's a, that's another topic for another charcuterie board. <laughs> so now that we mentioned basic, okay. Um. So somebody this week had I don't know had a pretty bad moment and I feel kind of bad for her. Okay. And you're probably gonna be like, oh fuck that, fuck her. But you know what? I feel bad for okay. her. I feel a little bad for Tiffany Trump. Did you see her her speech for like the? I did see the, the whole thing. I saw the highlights. <laughs> where she showed up for like the three gays who at the at the pride for the three gay republicans right at the, at the pride <laughs> trump rally or what have you right i did i felt bad for her did she for, for, dancing for, for, with the stars her mother did that's right i was like marla maples like, did, marla did, maples dance, did yes. right okay i was yeah. like one so, of them did for I those of you who, who don't know this week in tampa uh tiffany trump had you know she gave a little Speech. A she was a rally. Was I mean, a rally. I, well, I'm, I mean, we could call it a rally. I mean, I mean, I think there has to be like many people. I've had bigger to... rallies in my living room, <laughs> like, but it was like you know for gays I've for had Trump dinner parties that were bigger. Yeah, than exactly. Them. Like, yeah, you know, gays for Trump or what have you. And you know, and, and I felt bad for her because you know she came out and they were to the Black Eyed Peas, not even Deborah Cox. Come on. Um, and you know, and she kind of came out, and you know, the, the, the cuatro gatos that were there were like, yay or whatever. And she started speaking, and I felt bad for her because you could tell she probably wanted to help, you know, or be part of the thing. Like I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pulling politics out of it, right? Like I'm looking at it from help a purely in what way? Like she wanted to like help her dad's campaign, right? Like I'm looking at it just from a family standpoint, okay. right? Like as a daughter, she probably wanted to help her dad or be part of the thing, you know, like anybody would, right? right. Like if your family's doing something, you know, you you want to help, you want to be part of it, mm-hmm. right? Pero que la pobre. I feel like compared to the other three, the the three eldest. She's like the least articulate. I just don't even know if she's articulate or inarticulate. I just think that she is not that girl. Like she's like, not to like, be in the public eye. And yeah, to be like, like, like she she was she looked nervous. This was like I think her maybe her first time ever doing something like this that I can recall in recent history. Yeah, she's not really. I like I I understand she when people like involved. forget she exists because right right she's never really yeah and. 
And the thing she's not her, made fun of on SNL. She probably will be this week, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I felt bad for her because I was like, you know what? You can tell that like she is her mother's daughter and not her father's daughter. Got it. Okay. Because I mean, I don't know Marla Maples, but from what I've seen of Marla Maples, Marla from Maples Dancing is with the stars. Dancing with the Stars. You know, she's very like California girl, laid back. Mm-hmm. You know, like just you know, I don't want to ruffle feathers. I'm I'm just you know a girl. Mm-hmm. You know, blah blah blah, whatever. And I, by virtue of the fact that I think Tiffany grew up in the West Coast with her mother, mm-hmm. I believe more so than with her father in in New York, right? Versus the other three, mm-hmm. you can tell that the other three grew up in an environment of like hustle. You know, like I mean, I don't know if I'd call it hustle, but well, but but like that, you're gonna you're gonna grow up and you're gonna be yeah, a business up in New York. person. You're gonna be well, but but there was a certain pressure. But I think that's a New York thing. It is, but more so, I'm saying in that family, right? right? Whereas she was part of that family, but all over here on LA, mm-hmm. you know. And I just no le nace, and I felt bad for her because of that, because it's like they, like you know, because you feel like she's not cut out for it. And I felt bad for her because I knew that people were gonna mock her. Right. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, like, that's her dad. I mean, like, you love him or hate him, like, that's her father. It's like, she didn't pick her parents. Right. You know, none of us do. And then I also felt bad for her because there were a lot of people making fun of just her look. Like, online, people were saying that she looked like a melted cab American Girl doll. <laughs> she looked like an off-brand Miley Cyrus. Like... And you know what? That's that's not right either. Uh, no, because I'm, I'm not big on making fun of people's looks because, like, oh, that's something that you can't really again, control. Again, she showed up this way. Like, that's, right. you know. I mean, to a certain degree, you can control because, like, if you're going on the press, which my friends and I have this conversation all the time, of, like, you're you're, you're not ugly, you're just poor. Um, so, because <laughs> if you look at pictures of Ivanka that's, before all of her surgeries. Okay, that is going to be a t-shirt. You're not ugly, you're, you're just, just poor. poor. Yeah. Um, okay. I can give you three examples off the top of my head. <laughs> Ivanka Trump. Look at but her, it, like, befores. But Ivanka was cute. Okay. Because Ivanka was always, like, and, and again, nothing wrong with it, but Ivanka was always, like, thin and blonde. And right. you know what I mean? So there, you can get away with a lot of things when you're thin and blonde. Have you seen Bella Hadid before her surgeries? I don't even know what Bella Hadid looks like now. Okay. Well, <laughs> nobody does. Um, right. But uh, <laughs> look at Bella Hadid. Okay. And then the biggest example of this, Kylie Jenner. Mm. And I never thought, I always, like, was a defender of Kylie from when she was little. Like, I always said. That it would said, just make up. Like, no, like, no, not in that sense. I just, I always knew that there was something different about Kylie. I'm like, everybody was going on about Kendall because she was starting to model and all this stuff. I'm like, mm. what? Ch- Kylie is the dark horse and she's going to come out of this shit with like b- guns blazing and nobody's going to th- like think of it because everybody kind of underestimated her and here she is. Um, no, but like, but I kind of knew like sh- from when they were little, like mm-hmm. I could kind of always like tell that like there was something about her, but, but, and I never thought that she was ugly. She just like obviously has had like a ton of surgery, right, right, right. like not necessarily surgeries, but like injectables. Yeah, she does, she's done something. We don't know what it was exactly, but she's done something. It's, it's usually injectables. Usually, what changes people's as 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 a uh, partaker of injectables, usually what take what changes people's face is filler, because a lot of people okay a lot of people um, mistake or kind of what's the word I'm looking for uh, like they switch. Botox with filler, thinking that they mean the same thing. Oh, okay. They're, they, they're, they're not interchangeable. They're not interchangeable. Oh, see, I didn't know that. No, they're not interchangeable. Okay. So I can tell you the difference. Okay, well, Here's see. Here's a little educated. Here's guys, the learn part. This is the learn part. Okay. okay. So I get Botox. Really? Yeah. I'm looking at her so forehead right now, listeners. So it's worn off a little bit, and I get it where like I can move my eyebrows, mm-hmm. but that's it. See, that's why I could never but do Botox because I feel like... Because I, I did it in August, so it's about, it's going to be about time soon. See, I could never get that. A, because it's just not me. Like, I just don't care. But I feel like I am... My face is like my moneymaker, quote unquote. Like I'm very expressive. I'm very like cartoonish right. or whatever. And it's like if I got Botox and it just froze my face, I wouldn't be me. Well, that's why I, I tell them to do it like higher above my eyebrows because my eyebrows still, still move. But like the top, like this part does not move. Like it does now because like I said it weren't. Right, right, so like right, right. I can do this and you'll see this. But yeah, you're right. It's not it's not like you're frozen in, in time. Yeah. Right. And I don't get it anywhere else. I get okay. it a little bit here, but that like on the, the sides, like I'm I know I'm saying here and you guys can't see me. But, <laughs> on her temples. <laughs> but on my temples, I get a little bit on my temples and that's it. Um so that what Botox does is it just it freezes the muscle. Right? Yeah, it's it's botulism. Right, exactly. So it just freezes the muscle of wherever it's mm-hmm. injected. Okay. So, but filler is, it's usually like Juvederm or, um, but that's, that's the brand name, right? That's the brand name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, filler, the purpose of it is like to fill in like either your sunken skin or. So like, like if you have like crow's feet. Right. So, so if you have like crow's feet or like laugh, like I would, I, I kind of want to do it on my laugh lines because I'm starting to get it. No, but laugh lines are wonderful. They show your laughter. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they do. They're, they show you've had a life well lived. Damn it. I don't. 
want to do that. I just want my face to be like frozen and perfect. Um, <laughs> Life um, is about the imperfections. But anyway, um, so we basically it fills in those lines. Okay. But people that overdo it with filler are the ones, especially like here, are the ones that like start to get like that cat look. And they get all like puffy. And they get puffy. Okay. So a lot of times, again, going back to the housewives, they'll do this like too close to like a reunion or like an appearance on Watch What Happens Because you have to let it settle. You have to let it settle. With filler, you have to give it like four to five days, like let it settle, like don't leave your house. Hmm. So... Um, so a lot of times when like they go, sometimes like they'll go on shows and they'll be like, Oh, what work have you had done recently or whatever? And they say no, nothing. And it's like, they technically haven't had work done. Cause work done is surgery. Cause work done is surgery. Right. Okay. So like they haven't had a facelift, they haven't had a brow lift, they, but huh. they got their filler done recently or their Botox done recently. And that can kind of like change the way that your face, but really what does change the look of your face is filler. That's also what people get injected in their lips. Oh, that's what they get for that's like the, the, the big. Lips thing. Correct. Yes. See, I just rub some shrimp on my lips, my lips, and it's just it does the same effect. Yeah, I just I overdraw them. <laughs> I've always I, I like Kylie have always been very insecure about my lips, and I've always wanted them bigger, so I've always overdrawn. Nice them. lips. They're pretty. Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> Listen, you're cute. How you are? Well, thank you. Okay, just them. just sit there. Listen, but, don't may west me because you know that that's my weakness. But, <laughs> so, um. <laughs> well, on that note, honey. <laughs> So now you know you brought up uh, housewives, which okay. inevitably makes me think of uh, you know my arch nemesis Andy Cohen. Stop it. Which then do not say that in my presence. We've had this conversation. Listen, he knows it. He doesn't want to acknowledge it, but he knows it. The same way that I know when Alyssa Milano is upset with me because she gets a bad haircut. <laughs> it's a thing. Her and I know it. We don't talk about it. We don't acknowledge it. Well, but you know it's that there. Alyssa Milano is Neri's girlfriend. I heard that, and I I have feelings about that. That okay. I, I I I don't know how. I mean, she's retweeted him twice, so they're basically engaged. You know what? Come talk to me when it's Kim Cattrall, okay? Because <laughs> that's who's retweeted and responded to me. Not just retweeted, replied. Oh, nice. Okay, so me and Sam Jones like, like this. this. Yes. I got a uh, mama's got a, a retweet from uh, Heidi Montag. Ooh, nice. We, because we have very strong feelings uh, about uh, maternity shoots. Okay. Um, I, my, and I, my feeling on maternity shoots is I don't like naked maternity shoots. I, 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 I it's very, it's you, a very, you like, sh- like, a, like a loose dress type of thing. Not even like a loose dress. But not like, like the ones where it's just like, I'm nude and black and white covering my breasts. Yeah. Type of thing. And okay. for whatever reason, like I'm very like free about people's bodies. Like do what you want for, I, but I don't know why right. I have this. I'm like, recording this old naked. School. You are. <laughs> I have this like old school thing where it's like. Not when you're pregnant, and and it's I know it's like very suppressive, and it's not. Anything. But at least you recognize it's you. But I recognize it's me, right. and I know that this is my problem, and not. But so so anyway, Heidi Montag when she was pregnant mm-hmm. had a beautiful, beautiful engagement. Sh- I mean, not engagement shoot, a pregnancy mm-hmm. maternity shoot okay. where she had like these long gowns, and it was very like elegant and glamorous, and like that kind of stuff. I'm here for. Mm-hmm. But, um, so we, we said, like, we tweeted at her, like, this is how it's done or whatever. And she retweeted us. Nice. So she's my BFF. Listen, I like Heidi Pontide. I'm one of the, probably the few people who has body language on my iTunes. Oh, that's information <laughs> I didn't know. It's not a bad song. going to say that. But where I was going with this is, Annie um, Cohen. so Annie Cohen, homosexual. Yes. Not a bad week for the gays. Also, you know, Tiffany Trump no. aside. Not a bad know, week for the gays. Number one. You know, Carol Baskin comes out as bisexual. I missed that. You didn't see that? No. Apparently, she really does like kitty cats. Um, <laughs> How long have you been waiting to use that joke? All week. <laughs> I was just like, I don't care who's sitting across from me on this episode. It is being used. I am saying it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> Mi gente, we know this year's already been plenty scary, but there's always room for ghosts and brujas. This year, the ghouls and goblins are gathering at the Horrorland, South Florida's first 100% drive through haunted house attraction. On select dates from October 1st through October 31st, Halloween, you can experience 35 chilling minutes across seven haunted house themes from Alice in Horrorland, to Christmas Nightmare. No, yeah, hasta la crisma are getting in on the spooky fun this year. And all from the safety of your car, pa que no te dé la corona. 
Starting at less than 50 bucks per car, tickets for the Horrorland drive through Haunted House must be purchased in advance at www.thehorrorland.com. So gather up your wolf pack or your ghoul friends and experience the Horrorland, South Florida's safest, spookiest attraction this Halloween season. for her okay good for her but even more so you know the pope the pope not not you know the new the new pope the new pope francis yes not palpatine no who was there before no. um not the hitler youth not hitler <laughs> see i don't think i was hitler youth. i just think he was like palpatine from the emperor strikes no, back he was like legit a hitler youth oh well you it's know. like a real thing well like, i'm not made, making that up we've all made mistakes in our past i mean you yeah. know i used to think horizontal stripes made me look good <laughs> yikes exactly but um so yeah, so this week the the Pope came out and kind of, it's weird because, and, I, and I'm going to defer to you a little bit because okay. you went to private school. Yes. Uh, parochial school, not yes. just private school, right? Whereas I didn't. So I feel like you probably grew up a little more, I don't want to say you grew up more religious, but no, more. No, I did. I definitely did. Okay. Well, there my, you go. My father's a deacon, so. Oh, okay. That's that. right, I forgot that. Yeah. Because I was more thinking just along the time, the lines of like, you know, you, you grew up in that world. I did. More so than I did. Mm-hmm. So the Pope uh, this week, Pope Francis. Called for in a new documentary, he called for the creation of civil union laws for same sex couples, mm-hmm. uh, obviously breaking with the Catholic Church's right. official teaching. Uh, he said homosexual people have the right to be in a family, they're children of God, and have a right to family. Nobody should be thrown out or be made miserable because of it. Um, and I think he also said something to the effect of like they should be protected or you know, they should have legal protection or something right. to that effect. Mm-hmm. Um, this is pretty damn big, it's pretty um, progressive, um, for the church because. For whatever reason, the church likes to pick and choose the things it's okay with. Um, well, yeah, like everybody. Right. Uh, I mean, because it just, like, the, 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 the place in the Bible where they take that rule from, like, directly, mm-hmm. like, it's a chapter that has, it's, like, from Leviticus, which has, like, a bunch of rules. Like, it's just mm-hmm. all the rules for, like, whatever life following For God. life, yeah. Right. And, like, the same rule, like, has very specific... The same book, I'm sorry, has very specific rules for, like, men's haircuts and has very specific rules for, like, not wearing cotton and, like, stupid mm. shit that's, like... But in- it's the fabric of our lives. I understand. Mm. I'm um, so... I'm confused. How can right. it be the fabric of our lives and forbidden by the Bible? So, but my, my my point in that is is that there's a lot of things in there that are, like, maybe we're practical at one point, thousands, hundreds of thousands of Again, in historical context. In historical context, if you're also under the Catholic teaching that the first the old testament is more parable and not factual that there's okay. also to that to take into consideration mm-hmm. um that, that so i all that to say that that like a man who lies with a man is an abomination thing mm-hmm. is lumped in with all of those rules mm-hmm. so i don't know why we've clung to that particular one for such a long time we've kind of just said the other ones like we're, like, like we're gonna wear cotton now right. we're not gonna sell our daughters ad- adopt, <laughs> adapted to right, modern right. era and i don't know why that one you know has taken that just, way I, I know a lot of these old rules and stuff are kind of ways to control people in a sense uh, yeah it's, so i i know a lot of there's 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 a lot of shame involved in that in the sense of like there's been a lot of homosexual uh, church leaders and there's been a lot of controversy with that and right. I they're not I, I get like where the you understand why it started I understand why it started and I understand but why, why are we it still lasted here? With, for so long but why are we still here because it's fucking 2020 right and you know right it's again it's it's it's, fucking, it's, it's, it's 2020, 2020. <laughs> like why I don't have any explanation for it so you know it's very progressive. This Pope in general has been very progressive. He has been very from progressive. Day, from the day one. And I, well, because you see, he was a scientist, right? Or he, he went to, I think well, he, he has was, a degree in science or something like that. So he, Did you see the movie The Two Popes last year? Did not. It's really good. It's on Netflix. You should watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, I don't know. If, he has an education background. That much I know. So it's not like. I'm not, a, I, I, you could be right. I'm not 100% mm-hmm. sure. Um, that being said, like I, I've, I've just always gotten the impression from him that he's like a very practical person, and like he knows the modern world that we live in, mm-hmm. and he knows that like things are just not applicable that used right. to be applicable. Well, the Catholic Church has also been seeing its uh, numbers dwindle. Right. So I just like you said, almost from a practical perspective, it's just like listen, w- we need people- evolve or die, right? Like right. either you you adapt some of your views within because again he said civil unions well that's he the other didn't thing. say that's the other thing, and come was, get married at the church right, right that's the other thing and q and i were talking about this earlier because for people that don't know quills from um 
what the fuck is the name of her podcast? It's on Geek Bro. You can find it. Um, <laughs> uh, she she's she's a lesbian and she's married and mm-hmm. you know she she and I had this conversation earlier today actually where you know he chose his words very carefully because it is civil union and I've kind of always felt like that should be like religion in general's approach to that is you know yeah don't come to get married in my church because no right but if you want to go and get married por los civiles right. you know and, and again from a legal perspective from a legal perspective that's have at it and she said the same thing she agreed with me she's like marriage is a religious term anyway regardless of what religion that's you're coming true. from marriage is a religious term yeah so you know if you're only married legally you're civilly unioned i know that that's not a <laughs> it is right now way to change say approved that, but you know the, you're you're civilly unioned, whatever. <laughs> so you're you're we use the term marriage because that's just like the colloquialism that we use. Right, right. But it it's like saying Kleenex for tissues. Correct. Or band-aid, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's but it is in its origin a religious term. Right. So if we're gonna take the word marriage out of it and just kind of consider everybody that's like legally married that as long as LGBT people, LGBTQ, whatever, plus, plus, whatever. A girl, a at this point, just plus it, plus it. It's too many letters. Um, uh, are, receive the same legal protections and the same legal benefits. Right. Then that, I think, is the important thing. And I think that is the important part about his statement is that he is supporting people in those partnerships having legal protection. Legal, legal protection yeah. of that, you know? I haven't seen anything... Um, has there been any backlash? Or are we so, are, are we so enveloped in election... Of it I all that, that. Well, that. I mean, I think when you take that in terms with the context of our current Supreme Court mm-hmm. hearing and our current Supreme Court nominee, mm-hmm. who just last week, I have the quote here, said, as a Catholic, same sex marriage, marriage violates my core religious beliefs. Like, well, checkmate, bitch, because now it doesn't. So, right, right. and you're supposed to interpret the law and because whatever the pope says is you kind of have to like the pope is infallible in catholic teaching the pope right, right, right. is infallible so whatever the pope says like if you believe day is night and the pope says no night is day then all of a sudden you have to be like well night is day now right i mean basically theoretically the- in theory yes because the pope is infallible that is that is canon like catholic canonical laws of the pope is infallible okay. so it is what it is now right you know and if the, this is what we're going to move forward with and and him in general, because he's been so progressive, at, he's been such a stark contrast from Benedict XVI, who was the complete opposite, who changed the mass format to like pre-Vatican II shit. Sí, un viejo cacarrabia. Yeah, exactly. So, except like if you watch the movie The Two Popes, like they were friends. So you kind of hmm. see like, I mean, obviously it's like fiction and dramatic. Wait, but you don't know what happened. Yeah. You, but but they were no. It's there's there's like footage of them like hanging out and being friends, like watching soccer games. Mm. Like that's what it's what they did. Well, I mean, Scalia and no, eh, well, Scalia era? and RBG were. And like, RBG were like they right. went on vacation together. Right. I mean, so you know, there's there's it's I I I I really like him. Likewise. I really like him. I think he's. It's one of the few times that I would have to say. There, I, I have okay so many time. friends that <clears throat> from Catholic school that like just felt so <clears throat> so isolated by the church, right? Because they were taught their whole lives that who they were is wrong. Yeah. And for, fundamentally, fun, you are wrong. Fundamentally, you are wrong for existing. Or like, it's okay that you are the way you are, but you can't act on it. That was the other thing right. that we heard growing right. up. Right, you basically had to be like a eunuch. Right. So it's like okay, so like ignore like the and number that's hard, one. Y'all, like one we like of, going to the gym. <laughs> just saying. Like it's just like ignore like the most human primal instinct that you have. Like just ignore it. Like right. you know, and you can't do anything either because like if you shake it more than four times, you're masturbating. Like you know, it's <laughs> so. It's if that were true, I'd be blind. <laughs> okay, so like, what is this blind masturbation thing? Because I've heard it, but I've never gotten like a proper explanation. I don't think there is a proper explanation. I think it's just one of those things. Did you just do it enough and you go blind? Well, it's just one of those things that like people because you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing it right. Like so, quote unquote. Right. So like to, you know like if you do it too much, you're gonna go blind. So like oh no. Oh, it was like, like if you, you like make a funny a, face, it, your face is gonna freeze. Exactly. That way. Got it. Exactly. Okay. It's like a threat. It's okay. not like yeah. Okay. There wasn't like a I study. There was like a real reason. No, no, no. no, 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 no I, like, I know there wasn't like a real, real reason. <laughs> I got to jump sound like a dumbass blonde. Um, no, but I thought there was like a deeper meaning behind it. Oh, like it, like like centuries ago. Right. Like, the, you know, you would The get, legend of... Right. I, I don't know. The legend of the clopidia. I don't right. know. Like, <laughs> just blend shit together. Exactly. Okay. Well, I get it. Yeah. So that's where it came from. Yeah. yeah. There was nothing, nothing about that. But um, 
I think it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this moves forward because to your point, the Pope is infallible, right? So right. what does this mean? And then the next Pope can kind of come back and change things up again, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's theoretically, it's not like it's a Supreme Court thing where like right. you have to go through this whole no. process. Like, No, the next, there is a process. No, but the next Pope could come in and just be like, you know, I know Francis said this, but... Mm. It could. It depends on who they pick. Francis is relatively young. In, ter- in Pope terms. In Pope terms. um, Because I think the, the median Pope age is like literally 80. Oh my God. Um, Wait, why am I, oh my God? That's like the median age of our presidents. Right. So, um, he's, but he was elected, I want to say in his like mid 60s. So I. I really? That yeah. Young? I think he's, he's, I, I could be wrong. I could be talking out my ass, but I, I don't think I am because he's pretty young in relative terms. Yeah. 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 But, you so, know, Pope terms, he's the, young, yeah. my, my point is that like he's probably going to be around for a long time. Ratzinger is alive. I mean, I call him Ratzinger. I don't want to call him Francis. Um, Cardinal Ratzinger is alive. He chose <laughs> was, to retire. There was a lot of, names. under him, there was a lot of scandal. Um, there's a lot of shit that came out that he was, you know, hiding and moving people around and, you know, whatever. But in all fairness, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm about to pit the Catholic Church as the victim, right? But in all fairness to, to him... It's not something that started when he became no. pope. You know what I mean? No, so, no, 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 no. Absolutely so, not. That I shit's mean, been going on el, for centuries. El pagó los platos roto, but yeah. it it wasn't something that like he was just like, meh, nobody will notice, you no, know? No. So No. I mean, I just want to be very clear on 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 that. No, no, no. That's something that has, that has existed for centuries and, you know. Yeah. But anyway, in a, in a stark contrast to him, like, you know, I I'm a fan. You're a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Now, I do know people that are very conservative Catholic that say the Pope is too liberal, that yeah, say that the Pope is too progressive, that that's, there's no place for that in the church. So as like with anything else, people are going to think what they think. Um, I haven't really looked for like backlash on Twitter or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so... <laughs> we'll see. But now my, my hit back is like, well, not anymore, not, you know. Oh, that's wrong. Okay, well, no, not according to the Pope. So right, you can't. You can have it both ways. Pope says you can fuck, so go for it. Yeah, you can't have it both ways. You're not Carol Baskin. No. God bless her. But you see her on Dancing with the Stars. I did. I did. And you know what? Okay, she was not good. No. Again, did I, anybody expect her to be good though? Here, okay, here's the thing. I was, I was always. You were like hoping that she was. Amazing. I was always like, can you imagine if like she comes out there and like that first week they're like dancing the paso doble, Carol Baskin, and she's like a sex kitten, no pun intended, like on the dance floor. She's just like staccato, hitting everyone, and she's like, and all great form. And Bruno's just like, my darling, your shoulders are so wonderfully Bruno's pulled back. Like my favorite person. I didn't expect her to be like, but I'm like, wouldn't that have been wonderful? Like a world where she's just like, wow, yeah. and she's just like, maybe she doesn't win, but she makes like top four. Well, that didn't happen. No, it didn't. She got eliminated week three. And I think she And that's got... because there was no elimination week one. I think the only reason she got eliminated in week three is because they officially ran out of cat-themed songs. Oh, no. There were plenty of cat-themed songs. There were still some more to be... Okay. I mean, she didn't do anything from Cats. That's true. That's true. I mean, but... as you and I know. But that... Oh, God. That movie. There's like 26 songs from Cats. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is that they're all introductory and we already knew who she was. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking ridiculous movie. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. So, so for yeah, people that ahead, don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. So last year oh my god, it was only last year. I know, isn't it feel like five years ago? Because oh, it's fucking twenty twenty. Lord. And it was Dece- so December it was de- that's right, it was end of year. December yeah, of why. last year, Ish and I and our, our friend Missy went on a field trip because we and paid money. Yes, we did. Paid good money. <laughs> yes, we did, because we earned that money. To go see cats. We knew yeah. that it was we were not expecting anything. We, we were knew. going in. To laugh. Eye, to laugh. To yeah. laugh. Eyes wide open. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and I even felt kind of bad for it because the like the, the, the couple in front of us, like they were like, you know, not pareja mayor. Like mm-hmm. they weren't old, but they were like probably like in their 50s. Probably saw it in their 70s and loved it in the 70s and, and, and loved right. it. Right. Or they were there like on a date night or whatever. Right. And I felt kind of bad because like we were totally like just laughing out loud and being, I don't want to say we were being obnoxious. because no, the kids behind us were being obnoxious. Being, yeah, they were being obnoxious, but they were high school kids. Right. So it is what it is. That's what I expect. But... I felt kind of bad because I'm like, I esta pobre pareja that went out for like, you know, a date night right. to go to a movie in tres semana. It's my mom's favorite musical. And I told her. Why? I don't know. Who She's, hurt She her? saw it in New York in the 70s and she loved it. And I'm like, you're crazy. But my mom has issues, so whatever. Um, it was the 70s. How many drugs had she done when she saw it? My mother insists that she's never done any drugs. I don't believe her for a dirty <laughs> second. Um, but yeah, 
Anyway, uh, but yeah, and, and she wanted to see it, and I was like, please do not waste your time. Yeah, She's like, oh, but I can watch it on the plane for free. She goes to visit my brother. Oh, bueno, like, entonces, it's not. No, but she's on the plane. It's, it's not even like fall asleep on the plane material. Yeah, but on a plane, whatever. You're a captive audience. Like, you just, it, and if you knock out, you knocked out. You right. Know what I mean, no big deal. But but this movie was so, so bad. Well, my friend who's in Hollywood, she, I was. It was not good. We were. Even, and I love bad movies. I we, love We were bad texting movies. the other day because we frequently comment on each other's like Instagram stories and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she, <laughs> so something came up with with cats and I was like, I still can't fucking, and I re- re- responded to her. I'm like, I still not cannot believe that that fucking got made. And she told me, she was like, Loki, I passed on that audition. My agents thought I was crazy. And I told them, trust me, it's going to be a disaster. Did her agents not read the script? I mean, it's it's like the play. It, 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 the problem is that there's, there's no just, script. There's no script because it's all songs. There's also like no practical way to clearly translate that from stage to screen. Because on stage, for as 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 for as lacking as, whatever, as the source material yeah. is, like it's a good stage. I haven't production. seen it on stage, so I will take your word for it. It's on Broadway HD if you want to watch it. Yeah. Um, it's 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 a good stage production in in its production value. Mm. Right, but once you sense. but once you get over the production value of it all, right, what's left? Two hours of cats introducing themselves to each other, yeah, and then I one mean, of them dies. Like I mean, that's it's, the, that's literally what it it's is. It's literally, listeners. It's literally two hours of like, Jellico, Jellico, Jellico. Hi, I'm Jellico, Jellico, Jellico. <laughs> this is Jellico, Jellico, Jellico. Here is Jellico, Jellico. Let's go see Jellico, Jellico, Jellico. It's two hours of memory, that. memory, Death. and then and then more. <laughs> Now she died. Now she died. Jellico, <laughs> Jellico. Like that's it. That's the entire movie. Like I just saved you two hours. Yes, yes. No, that it. That absolutely. I like you, no lies detected. It's just not. It was just not good. Do you know? <laughs> however, do you know that on YouTube there is a nine-minute compilation of basically anybody that's famous singing the bridge part. Oh, I think you've shown this to me. Memory. I think you showed this to me. If you ever yes. have like 10 minutes to kill like on the toilet, like look this up. Right. Because now that Quibi's gone. Now that Quibi's gone. <laughs> you have, you have 10 minutes. Quibi, Quiggy, they trade so hard. You, you know, Quibi is like the Gretchen Wieners of streaming. None for Gretchen it's Wieners. Just, it was trying to make fetch happen it and nobody cared. It, it did not happen. All, although I am happy for Jasmine Cephas Jones who won an Emmy because of Quibi. So... I, you know what? That's going to be a Trivial Pursuit question. That is going to be a Trivial Pursuit question. Like, what is the only thing that Quibi ever did right? Right. <laughs> so Gave can... Jasmine Cephas Jones an Emmy. <laughs> an Emmy. <laughs> that's going to be the... Mark your calendars, <laughs> listeners. That is a Trivial Pursuit question that's coming. Trivial Pursuit 2021. 2020. That, that, that's what no, the 2020 gonna... edition. Oh, you're right. The 2020 edition. Are you edition. kidding me? This year alone has like what four versions. What year are we in? This, this year has four versions of uh, Trivial Pursuit oh coming at it. I cannot believe that we're still in the same fucking year. I know. Whatever. It's insane. Uh, so yeah, that's, if you ever need have some time to go look that up because it's everybody famous. It's like, it's Betty Buckley, it's mm-hmm. Celine Dion, it's Andrea Bocelli. Oh, okay. So not just people who've been in the production. No, but they're okay. hard. It, it is people that have been in the production. Right, but not just. Right, but okay. not just. Like Nicole Scherzinger was in the production yeah, for a Leona long time. Lewis. Leona Lewis. is and yeah. like, and it's, it is like, it's really, really good. I mean, if I will say, you can Because it's the one good song. It's the only song. Like, it's not even that it's a good or bad song. It's just, it's the only song. Like, people say, Cats, oh, memory. That's it. Like, yeah. what, what What else you got? Nothing. Jellicle, Jellicle. That's it. That's the whole damn movie. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I bought Idris Elba. You know what? No, he got paid. <laughs> I don't feel bad for anybody in that movie. They got a paycheck. Yeah. I mean, as far as we know, maybe some people were blackmailed. <laughs> no. But it, I love how, like, none of the stars, like, stood up for it. Because normally, like... What are they going to stand up in for? In a lot of... But normally, even if something's bad, they'll be like, oh, but it was fun to make. Like, they'll find okay, okay. something positive to say right. about it. Like, Judy Dench was like, no, fuck that. It was terrible. Yeah, no. And, like, they're, yeah, they're just like, no, thank you. So my next project... Like, they're just, like, moving on. <laughs> Idris but, Elba would have been a great time to announce that you're the next James Bond, sir. Or Black Panther or, or something. Black, yeah. Like, whatever. <laughs> just pick something. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so we're talking about musicals. And okay, we're gonna. Do- I I gave Darian fair warning that this was gonna happen. It was gonna happen eventually, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna rein it in a little bit. Okay. So because you and I are going off on musicals, we could have like an 18 part. Well, he told me we can record a boy a, a, a bonus episode with with musicals. You and me stuff. musicals. Well, okay, we we shall. Okay, but have you seen? Um, there's actually two, three musicals really that are coming out. 
um, on two are on, on Netflix and one I think it's theatrical. But um, have you seen the trailers for the prom? I saw the trailer for the it prom. It just came out today. Today, yeah, that's on Netflix. Ryan Murphy production. Um, the Dolly Parton uh Christmas the Christmas theme, uh, uh, movie, movie musical musical yes. And then so there's uh, everybody's talking about Jamie. Do I, you, you don't know that no, musical? No, I don't know that musical. Ha, 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 I have stumped. I have stumped you, the master. Oh, my God. I don't know about this. <laughs> so it's a musical. Um, it was only on the West End. Okay. That's probably why I don't know yeah, about it. Yeah. So it's, it's a British musical. It's actually based on a documentary. I think it's either a BBC documentary or an ITV documentary, one of those okay. British channels, about a 16-year-old boy who's a drag queen. Okay. And it I'm, kind of, I'm in. You don't have to say anything. Yeah, okay, we're done. Like we're just gonna go. We're gonna go recreate it right now. Um, I'm so, good. So it was on the West End. It was a huge hit on the West End. Okay. I actually have not heard the the recording of the West End production. What I've heard is the concept album. Okay. The con- and it's like almost all the sa- all the songs. It's, okay. it's fewer songs because obviously a concept album is like look, just get the gist of it. That's how Hamilton started. Hamilton started. It was a mixtape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just so good. And then the, in you know, the trailer, it's again, it's, it's British, it's drag queens, it's musicals. It's just like, sign, sign me, me up. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, can I get, can I help review it? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm just, I will pay you. <laughs> I'll pay, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, and in pounds. So you're getting more for the deal. Um, but I was just like, wow, it's like, it feels like we're getting a lot of, I, I know that every, every so often people are like, oh, the musicals are coming back. Right. Like. But I no, but like, I feel like it's actually coming. I feel back. like there's just little like undercurrent. It's been, a, it's been a steady right since Chicago. It's been a steady, a steady like, climb. and we've had a little setback, and then we but we keep going. Like I, I feel like before Chicago, it you, was nothing. It you was had like a moment where it was terrible. just like you just didn't do a musical. Right. You didn't do a musical. Nobody's unless you were it. Disney. But that's not a musical. That's a Disney movie. You know but what I mean? Like, they, no, no, yes. but, but but it wasn't. But for 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 my generation that grew up with that, that was our musical. That was our introduction to musicals, right? Because but on paper, that was not a quote unquote musical. Right. That was a Disney movie. outside because outside of like Grease and Annie, which I saw when I was a kid, but still, those movies are from the seventies. Yeah, like what was so, the last big musical that actually? I would, and I love this movie, but Xanadu, I think, killed the whole genre as far as movie musicals. I mean, yeah, realistically probably, speaking, right. you know. And then you had your one offs like Little Shop and all that, but yeah, it was but a, even. It was effectively dead. Even Little Shop. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a hit. No. And I don't like the movie version. I only know the movie version, so I can only speak to... I know that okay. it's not the same ending. It's I, not. I know it's not the same and ending. The but stage I'm speaking, ending but I'm speaking is to the musical, so much better. But I'm speaking to the musical arrangements. I also don't like Ellen Green. I'm not a fan. What? Yeah, sorry. Okay, this is up there when with what I found out about you the other day that you had like... Only like in the that last I've never month. seen the, that I've only seen the Golden Girls like like, like as of like two weeks month. ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I I'm glad I'm drinking wine because you're not gonna these, like dramatically throw it in my face. I don't waste liquor. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. What good are you, you didn't just meet me. <laughs> <laughs> these are things that I feel like I don't know about you, and I'm like I, I'm I'm like shocked. I'm I'm. I don't like Ellen Green. I'm, I'm not gonna sorry. lie. I'm sorry. How do you not like Ellen Green? Because I don't. Andrew Lloyd Webber loves her. I know, but I don't know. She just annoys me. Whatever. Anyway, we're gonna move on because I like you. I also think that like part of me is like a little bitter that I'm not in these roles that I know I could be amazing in. <laughs> okay, I think that's fair. <laughs> that's so, fair. That's a very fair assessment. So, and even though like that was made before I was born, I think <laughs> uh, they could do a remake. Actually, they, they are they, gonna they, do a remake. Well, they, yeah, and they did a, a revival in the La Jolla Playhouse. They uh, did with but MJ they are, Rodriguez. They are doing and, a film remake. Actually, the the revival that they did, the two leads were were Hispanic, were right? Latinx. Well, they did, but then they did an off Broadway revi- uh, revival as well mm. with um, Jonathan Groff and Christian Borrell and uh, Tammy Blanchard. That's right. They 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 basically they brought over. Which the... I don't care for Tammy Blanchard as Audrey either. I know that name. I don't know she's her well enough. She's too. She's not like nasal Audrey, which is kind of what you expect. Mm-hmm. She's very like, she's very New York Audrey, and it's like deeper, mm-hmm. and it was like like. I, her voice is fine and like other things, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't, it wasn't right. To it wasn't But Audrey. I like the arrangements of that. Of that show. I think for me, Carrie Butler was the best Audrey. If you uh, listen to no. the staged version from like 2005 or something like that. Is that the one that started here? Yeah. In Gables? Yes, yes, yes. With, with uh, it's, it's Carrie Butler and Hunter Foster. Yeah. That one is really, really good. And Carrie Butler for me. Carrie Butler like is like another one that's like Sutton Foster. Like you fucking play every role. But, sure. but Carrie Butler, listen to that version. It's really good. All right, so we're gonna shift from musicals only because yeah, we could sorry. literally like like we could go on for <laughs> this is another. Not what happens like when you get me started. I know, no, and me too. I mean, I don't need much prompting either. 
but going back to the prom, so I did see the trailer for the prom today. Yes. I had never, I'd heard about it. I I've saw, never seen the music. I, I heard the music. I nothing. hadn't, I hadn't until today. Yeah. And it's every theater kids show. Like, okay. Cause it's very, it's very modern. It deals with modern topics, but there's a tons of references to other shows. The music. Is, oh, it's, it's referential. Okay. Right. The music is very Broadway, but very modern at the same time. It's mm-hmm. a very, it's a, it's very, very strange in a good way. It's very meta. Okay. Um, That's such a word that like, everybody uses now. My favorite part of that trailer, though, is... Um, okay, wait. Can I guess before you say it? Yes. All right. Because I know what my favorite part was. Because okay. I, I, I chuckled. Is it when Meryl Streep brings out the two Tonys? There is not enough... <laughs> I don't have the words to describe what a baller fucking move that is. <laughs> I... <laughs> have a lot of aspirations in my life there's a lot of fictional characters that i aspire to be when uh-huh. i'm of a certain age karen walker moira rose um goals go- yeah <laughs> dorothy from golden girls uh to, to to have the balls to not only walk around with one fucking tony in your bag <laughs> to walk around with two <laughs> Tonys in your bag, and then use them as leverage <laughs> to get a suite. To get a suite in a fucking podunk, La Quinta, or fucking Days In, or whatever the fuck Listen, it is. Listen, I get it. I would use like un premio TV novela. Like I would. I don't care. I would pull it out. Like I mean, uh, I'd use a fucking Day County Youth Fair ribbon. Yeah, if like I if, to. If, if, that, if I knew that would get me something, I would. But like just that, <laughs> that kind of air that chutzpah to to carry is just so fucking goals <laughs> goals and i'm like put a fork in it because i'm fucking done because that for me i was like i don't need anything else the trailer can end right here that's that's enough yeah got me oh, I love it. <laughs> but well speaking of enough and done. Oh. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little parched. Are we done? Why are we done? Parched. I know. It's because talking when, when we get going, we just get going. This is like, you know. Are we done? Okay, fine. Well, Whatever. we can just keep talking off. off. We, we still got a bottle of wine. I guess. So it's time for the last soda. Okay. And as the guest, I will I will let you go first. So, you know, it's again, you brought me these lovely meats and cheeses and mm-hmm. you know this delightful Chianti which I may or may not be <laughs> dando trajueta on already <laughs> uh, you know, I've been like nursing it and I haven't really eaten all day so there's only I, I brought you food I, I'm over 200 pounds there's only so far that meats and cheeses is gonna get me oh my God, I understand that <laughs> speak speak to me because I get it <laughs> but I will defer to you uh, you know so who gets my, your, your last my soda my last soda is actually gonna go to Pope Francis okay so because, girl, be progressive. I'm very supportive of you. I have been since day one. And I think that that's the way to go when you're trying to bring, bring the message of love. Christ and love <laughs> and acceptance and, like, it doesn't matter. Let's do it. I'm in. Especially if he dresses like Moira Rose. Especially if he dresses like <laughs> Moira Rose. Listen, that was going to be my Halloween costume. Was it really? I was going to be Pope Mora. You're not doing anything for Halloween, like not, not even taking the kid for trick-or-treating? I probably will take him. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He's going to do Halloween at school, um, but I don't know. I don't know what else really to do. I don't know that I trust. Like, I don't normally trust strangers with candy. I don't know in like a COVID world <laughs> if I need to trust strangers with candy. So I I don't know. I really don't know. So we'll, we'll, we'll find out on and the 31st. And there's always like a Halloween party that we go to that's like obviously not happening this year. So. Oh. Well, that sucks. But anyway. No. So I'm actually going to give my last soda to you. Oh, um, I've never gotten a last soda. I'm so excited. See, it's the first time. See, oh I'm going to give it to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for stopping by and oh filling God, in. Any time. And, I'm like you know, annoyed and, that we're done. And, sp- <laughs> and spending the hour here just chit-chatting and drinking wine. Like, again, the beauty of it, you know, when 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 Darian said he was like, oh, I, you know, like, I, I, I can't do it this week. I just, you know, there's, there's not enough time in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like him and I, our first thought was like, 
we'll get Stephanie. We will call I mean, Stephanie and listen, see. Listen, I really appreciate that. Like, I, I'm not like mushy very often, but I really appreciate that because I love you guys. I miss you guys. I know. This is why I'm like. This I'm, is like the first time, like post COVID, oh, that I've seen forever. you. Forever. Yeah. I haven't seen you in a really long time. And we haven't hung out in a really long time. So I, know. I really appreciate that, that that I was like the first person you guys thought of. Oh, Thank and you. unanimously. Like, it wasn't even like, you know, we'll call her and if she's available, but if not, like, it was just like, no, no. no. We're going to have to figure out how to make this happen. I will always make it work for you guys. Mwah. Mwah. Love it. Love, Love it. So, listeners, that brings us to the end. We hope, as always, is that you listen, laugh, and learn. And look at me being all Darian like. <laughs> um, and, you know, as always, don't forget to grab your pastelito, your croqueta, and your cafecito. That was episode one. Or your charcuterie board and your glass of wine. It, you know, it depends on the day. Yeah. It depends on the time of day. <laughs> Quite frankly, you know what? Every hour's happy hour during COVID. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for coming. Thank you again, Stephanie, Anytime. for for swinging by. That was episode 132, guys. All right. Cuídense, mi gente. Bye. Bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes.